All right, I'm Diane Gellin, president of the board of Through the Flower. I was living in Los Angeles in 1972 when Woman House happened. I was a graduate student in art history. Somehow it completely escaped me. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Are you sorry about that? <laughs> Very sorry about that. But I saw the film, I'm sure I saw the film in either 1973 or 1974 shown at the Women's Building in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, which was the first time I knew about it. Uh, it was at the opening of the Women's Building in 1973 that I first met Judy Chicago, when I bought a, actually from the opening exhibition of the Women's Building, I bought a work of art of Judy's. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I had ever walked into a space where I felt that there was art that actually spoke to me as, as a woman. Mm -hmm. And two years later, I started working with Judy. I was the uh, administrator of the dinner party and we have had a long relationship since then. I, Kate, you have already met. Mm -hmm. Johanna, you have already met. And the wonderful Judy Chicago. We saw her only, interestingly, at the end of the film. Um, although, needless to say, she had a big hand in this project. I hope you've all taken the time to look also at our historic show. Um, and because it's my understanding that you only filmed like the last weekend? The last, I don't know, four days <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, Not you more. know, filmed right at the last week of Woman yeah. House being open. And then you put, you had no money. And then as, I had no as money. As usual in 1972, trying <laughs> to make a film. That with, a, with a feminist, uh, yeah. feminist bent to it. <laughs> and the canisters went into your freezer. That's that right. right. <laughs> That's right. And un undeveloped. Uh, undeveloped. And then you finally got. That was funds. risky. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was risky. I mean, you have to remember. You know, to me, you have to remember going back to 1972, 73. 73. How yeah. risky it was to do to open the women's building, to make mm -hmm. art that spoke to us as women, mm -hmm. to make films. It was a whole different time. No, I'm not so different. Just it's just it was just as risky as a doctor doing an abortion now. Um, Absolutely. And worrying about getting arrested. Yeah. Mm. Questions. So we're opening up to questions. Uh, uh, silence. Before, wait, wait. Before a question from Julia, I just want to say one thing about Diane. <laughs> that there's a somewhat of a myth in the, around the dinner party that nobody was paid. That wasn't really true. There was a small core staff that was paid, not much, but Gellin would never take any money. And she would say, if you don't hire me, you can't fire me. <laughs> and that's been our relationship. <laughs> and it works. Okay, now, Julia, introduce well, I yourself. Which piece of art you bought of Judy's at the opening? Yeah. Juliet, introduce yourself. What? I'm Juliet Myers. I'm a dinner party leftover. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I took her money. I took her money when I worked on the dinner party. Because I was tired of cleaning houses in Beverly Hills with a master's degree. So that I could work on the dinner party project, which was the greatest education of my life. I bow to Judy, who is the most important teacher I've ever had. Judy, you're always asking me to do more than I thought I could do. Mm -hmm. That's the mark of a great teacher, to keep mm -hmm. you in the book. Thank you. So your Thank question. You. <laughs> what was the work of art? I bought a work of art for $300, well, which well, took me three months to pay off. Mm -hmm. And it was a drawing from the Great Lady series, and it was a drawing to Jay DeFeo. The artist from Jay, San Francisco. Jay yeah. So you have... You who have labored, yeah. and that work still sits in my office yeah. in London, yeah, yeah. where I live. Thank you. Fantastic. So, questions about the film? <laughs> Comments about the film? It's, to me, it's a really powerful film, and it, I think it really still holds up. How, Johanna, how did you hear about the Woman House Project? How did you come about? Well, I mean, um, I had been an artist before. That's what I had done long until I was 30 years old. It's only at 30 that I picked up the camera. So, my always had an ear for what was going on uh, in LA. And I heard about it and went to see it and fell in love with it. And 
and I just talked to you, and you said okay, and there was no money. <laughs> no, the money was changed hands or entered my hands, uh, and, uh, and I happened to be married to a, one of the most brilliant cinematographers of the time, and so I, it was easy to make, uh, and we both just made it. Just do it. And then how did, then how, where, where, you, you said you hadn't processed the footage. The I didn't process it. I don't know for how many months. I know, I, I, did I say how long ever? I think it was. Six months or something. something like, like, I think you got uh, funding from AFI. AFI. Or something like that. American A small Film Institute. Amount, American, American Film, Film Institute. Institute. Yeah. yeah. Really fantastic place. But um, yeah, I got small enough to make uh, a few prints to do a little trailer, so to speak, and go out and hustle. And then, and then how many, what, it was like two years later before you finished? I think maybe, not more, you know, it wasn't too long. I, I, I think it took really a year. I think it came out in 73. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. 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 But uh, being as how you were glutton for punishment, <laughs> then you called me up and you said, you remember this? No. I do. What are you working on now? Oh. <laughs> and I said, I was working on a project about women's history, mm. and I'd been studying China painting for two years, and I was going to a China painting convention in uh, New Orleans, and you said, we're going with you. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's and right. That, because no. Johanna may write out of history, the making of Judy Chicago's dinner party, which we're going to show here as part of our next exhibition, mm -hmm. Learning from History, the dinner party. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many lessons mm -hmm. we can learn from the women who struggled and struggled and struggled for decades, for years, and for centuries to get us the rights that are under assault now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. We, I, I was there in New Orleans. Yeah, you that's there right, New Orleans. that's right. Yeah. That's when we all drank mint juleps, <laughs> <laughs> remember? That's right. That's Sitting right. on that right. hot porch that's drinking right. mint juleps. Yep. Mint juleps, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And, yeah. and we went there with no money also. Yeah, no, we had the right. So uh, yeah, it's a long story. Yes, Julia, the only one with questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would acquiesce to anyone. But to me, what's interesting, uh, when you say you got in on the last week at Woman House and you got all the footage, and, and I love the soundtrack, which I think is absolutely extraordinary, how you got that music together and laid it, so on and so forth. But here's the thing, Joe. You made that film in the last week, and then it was like you knew I'm never going to let Judy do something that I don't get in on the very beginning. <laughs> uh, and then you fall to New Orleans. Is that when you met Rosemary Redmond? Yeah. And and, uh, and by the same token, um, Johanna has a film called Crazy Wisdom that uh, follows her teacher, uh, Trump or Ribichet. Mm -hmm. uh, and your footage from that is so early. So the idea that you were never late to the party again. <laughs> you were there, and the dinner party in particular, you were there filming before the full concept of the dinner party was even formed, probably. Uh, Judy, you were making plates to hang on the wall at one point. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Kate? Oh, well, I was going to say, what I love about the film is that it's so experiential. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there could be interviews with all the artists, but it works just having the group conversation, but um, just experiencing the room and then getting the audience reactions mm -hmm. rather than hearing so much from the filmmakers. I think you, you feel each room that you're in and each installation and every performance too. Mm -hmm. And I just like that verite. So what did you think about the film? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, who are you? What's your name? Oh, oh, wait. Hi. Oh, go ahead. Um, and then you. So stand up, stand up. Um, hi, thank you. Um, so powerful. I'm like really moved. Um, I was born in 71, and so this is like I don't know the before, right? I only know the since, 
Yeah. And this is so powerful. Like this is the first time, and I know your dinner party. I used to live in Brooklyn. I've seen it. But about you and about this woman house, it, this is a new um, experience for me. And I'm reading your Through the Flower now, and I, I saw that just the timing of this. I had to come and be here. I live up in Santa Fe now, and for the first time, like the power of this film for me. And thank you for taking the risk to put it together and just that that drive. I feel part of a culture of women now. And the time, I mean, the timing of this, like 50 years isn't that long. You know, we've come <laughs> far, but like, we're, where are we going now? You know, it's like, this is necessary. Mm -hmm. This is so needed to drive that, to wake my generation up and then the ones after me, we, we have become silenced again somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's a falsity about where we are. Yeah, what's your name? My name is Jenna. What do you do, Jenna? I'm an artist. Just stepping into my artist self. And this has is redefined. Like, oh, what am I doing? Is it like I am redefining what I'm doing? And I'm so on fire from this. And I don't really have a question. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep coming back. <laughs> Oh, hi, I'm Susan. Um, I'm kind of new to all this. I've heard of you and everything, but I didn't know all this history. And I'm just wondering, this movie, it was wonderful. It was amazing. And we just came from the exhibit. It's, it was absolutely mind-boggling. And it's like, I want to come back and learn a lot more, too. I'm not an artist at all. But I was just wondering, like, how, when has this movie been shown? How do you like? Does it go it's around? It's been shown all over the it's world. It's been shown oh, all, over so all over the world. It, it just like keeps going. To, to tell you the truth, I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going. I don't like, you know, I don't like call up, you know, people and and and, and movie uh, distributors and so forth and work it out. I sent it out there. I have distributors. I don't think I've made a cent off of it for, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I used to in the old days. And I just let it go, and and then I and I constantly hear not only through Judy, of course, but of it, people seeing the film somewhere in the world. So I don't know. It has Wait, it has a life. Been, there have been woman house projects all, the, all the, over the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm sure wow. they've been stimulated by the film. Yeah, right? someone. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great because it holds up, like you said, beautifully. Yeah, it's amazing. It's actually yeah. sad. Then it holds up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, not for the <laughs> Yes, well, I, I could just say one of the said. You'll, you'll be next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back then, I played the Venice Biennale. I played at the Whitney um, and a couple other international festivals. And then it became part of the permanent collection at the Pompidou. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, okay. Hi, I'm Carol Eagle Arts, and Hi. I love the film. And I was wondering about the theater pieces. Were they performed periodically during the time of the exhibit? They or? were. It's very much like the performances here. They were. Per you haven't been to Woman House yet. Woman House 2022. Yeah, I've been over there. Yes, but no. you haven't been to the performances. No, no. They're no. on Saturday nights at uh -huh. 5:30. Tonight. So tonight. the performances tonight. Uh -huh. And it was the same thing there. We used the living room as our performance space, mm -hmm. and everybody sat around in a circle. And um, I did a performance workshop then, just like I did this time. And every people developed their performances in the performance workshop and then perform them regularly on weekends. And here, we, the performers, there are some historic performances. Uh, if you saw the Cog and Con play, it's performed by and two men. And the Cog and Con, right? By, <laughs> by Chiara, our former mayor. And we're slowly oh, driving. And it's absolutely a riot. <laughs> I mean, it is as um, much as the cotton town play performed by women in the original woman house made fun of rigid gender roles to see men 
asking this of each other, mm-hmm. it's like the pit is like, God, how ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's, a re- it's a revelation that it, that, it, that it works with two men. And it's, yeah. and today, you know, they will be performing today along with everybody 30, else. Right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, other comments, questions? Yeah. Yes? Who are you? I'm Georgette. Yes. Um, So, was this um, exhibit um, done again in the 80s? Or was it just 71, 72? It it was up for a month in LA in January of 1972. And there were 10,000 visitors in the month. Because I'm, you know, it, of that age, of having many experiences in my life, and I could have sworn that I was there. Mm-hmm. So I remember, especially the one about waiting. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot, I just, in fact, I told people, I saw that exhibit, and I remember that because it was just so powerful. Mm-hmm. And I graduated from high school in 71. I don't think I went down to LA in 71 or 72, so I'm wondering. There was I a saw the film and thought I had been in the house. <laughs> 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 and your brain gets and you're only at this time. There was an exhibition at LA MOCA. There was what? A, an exhibition at LA MOCA called Division of Labor. I think it was in 1995. And they had a couple of rooms recreated. I recreated mm-hmm. the menstruation bathroom for that. The lipstick, the uh, lipstick bathroom, no, the shoe closet was recreated. I think Faith Wilding's womb room, which she still had, was so. But that's the only time uh, there until now. Okay, it was yeah, another life. Must have been. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was great. It's interesting of you know the things that remain in your brain as we age. And for some reason, that, and I've done theater throughout my life, that waiting, waiting thing has just always been there, and I could have swore I was there and saw it, but. Uh, well, also, Donald and I did a, in 30, uh, we were invited for the 30th anniversary of Woman House to do a project at a college, Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, Kentucky, don't ask. That's when, that's when Donald took up drinking small batch whiskey. <laughs> but the thing that was interesting about that was the first time uh, there were ever men involved. And the men, some of the men's installations were absolutely fascinating, as they are in Woman House. Because, it, you know, when we did the original woman house, nobody was thinking about the fact that men also live in houses, you know what I mean? Because there's been such a historical association between women and the house. And so because of that, that it was new subject matter for the men, for the male students, just like it was new subject mm-hmm. matter mm-hmm. for the women in 1972. Well, I feel like that was a real powerful part of the film for me, is when they scan the men's faces and just see their discomfort or whatever across their faces. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was well done, thank you. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? <laughs> yes. Um, hi, I'm Hannah. I'm also an emerging artist. Um, I guess I, I'm really, I love the film, especially being not alive when it happened, being able to see it and experience it. Um, it's still so relevant today. And, sort of a terrible way, but in a good way as well. Um, I guess my question is, what um, is advice you could give to emerging artists who were not able to participate in this project? <laughs> it's your favorite question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, number one, I'm not the Ann Landers of the art world. <laughs> <laughs> number two, what I try to do is I've had a really long, hard struggle as an artist, and I've tried to document that. Most recently in my lifelong autobiography, The Flowery, and whatever, if my struggle and my path is 
valuable to younger artists, I'd be glad, but I can't give you a capsule answer. But <laughs> if you really want to know, read the flowering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yeah. the, the last line of the film, I, I repeat that all the time. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And I think that's something for all of us to yeah, but there's. But I know, easy for me to say. Yeah, no, 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 that was fine. It's just that a lot of people know what they want, but they don't know what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. They don't, don't, also don't know how to get there. Yeah, yeah. they don't yeah. know how to get, how to get, there, get right? there. And it's a journey to get right. there, and it, and it you know, takes a lot of effort. It doesn't come easy. Yeah. You just have to do it. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's, right. that's what it comes down to. I mean, when I think about, well, okay, so how did I make my film now? I just saw uh, something, I don't know, some performance or something, or some art of hers, and I just had to do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was going to be hard. After that, I didn't think it was going to be hard. And I had never, well, I had made small stuff before, but I never t uh, took on something like this, which not only you know, is complex in its own way, but it's about feminism too, so it's like I'm, it's part of my story, you know. I mean, I really totally connected with what Judy had to say in that way. So, I, it just, you just get up and you do it. And you don't give up. And you don't give you up. You definitely don't give up. And if you can, it's good if your husband's a great cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> I say the same thing about my husband. There you go. There you really go. really lucky. And that artist is really lucky to be married to a photographer. There you go. She yeah. understands. Yeah. <laughs> Laura. Laura. Oh, I have a question. Um, did you have a vision? Yeah. Okay. First of all, did you have? Did you go in the house before you started filming? Did I go to the house before? Well, I, I must have gone at least once or twice. Okay. Yeah. So I was wondering, did you have a vision when you compiled all the the footage together, or did you just keep on filming and then you had the vision once you edited? Um, I usually want to know that I've got the footage before I start cutting, because you can cut any time, but you can't shoot any time, because you have to have the person to shoot, you have to have the time, you have to have the person you're shooting, so you have to do that first. And you might come back, like, I, I'm sure I came back for at least a day sometime, one or two days, you might come back later on, but you have to have the film you know, before you start down to edit. Or you can start editing and go back and forth if you know you're going to do that over a period of time. It's more or less the same thing, you know. You just have to be able to do that. One more question. How many cameras did you use? Just well, usually only one. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Baird was a really good camera. Baird, Baird was yeah. one of the great cameras. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. there were so many angles. Where yeah, he, he did them all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And we shot it in a short time, too, like a week or two yeah, weekends. You so. didn't or, have a lot of time. No, we didn't have a lot of time. Was the end. Yeah, that was the end. No chance to go back and pick up shots. No, no pick up shots. No pick up shots. No pick up shots. No pick up shots. Yeah. I, I just have one question. Sure. So my question is the three men um, who have the <laughs> best line. Um, so were the, did you know? Did, were they there with their wives? Did they just show up by Probably. themselves? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, and did, do you know who they were? I'm no. Like, no. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite parts. It doesn't yeah. matter how many times I see it, their reaction is like so perfect. Uh, <laughs> I would love to like, you know, they're dead now for sure. Right? <laughs> but to, like track them Maybe down. Not. What did those men do in their life that they thought that you just have one big menstruation party? <laughs> Ago, what's that? I think a lot of men really didn't know any much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, nobody, nobody talked nobody about it. Nobody talked about it, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, 
They just let the camera run and let those guys, you know, do it. <laughs> I, I don't know, but you know, when I became a filmmaker, I never dreamed that I'd make a film about menstruation. <laughs> well, I didn't exactly think when I was in art school that I'd be sitting on the floor painting Tampax and Kotex with and my colleagues advising me on the color. <laughs> No, not brown enough. Oh, <laughs> too purple. And then at the end, there's just a little spot. <laughs> I did it three times, you know, when I first did it, and then at Ellie Mocha, and then again. It's right a mystery here. to why that comes into our story. <laughs> when you think about it. And uh, just another question about the other artists who were involved in the presentation. What, what did they do with their careers? Is there any documentation or anything that they've done? I mean, from Woman House? Yes. The Woman House was done by the, who I, who I call the Fresno Girls, and Nancy Yodelman, who was the facilitator of this project, says, Judy, we're all in our 60s or 70s. And I'm like, yeah, but you always be girls to me. <laughs> because they were in the first feminist art program mm -hmm. out of the 15 students, nine, are practicing professional artists. That is an astonishing number, given in art school, it's one out of a thousand. Wow. And then when we went to CalArts, and then some of the CalArts students were in the Woman House Project, and there are a number of them who are also practicing artists. In fact, in LA recently, we went to LA recently at the Farewell to Rockingham, and a woman named Robin Mitchell, mm -hmm. who was in the Woman House, she, she worked, she came up and reminded me which <laughs> things she did. And then she went on a whole thing. But anyway, Mira Shore, who did the, uh, that, that, um, that sort of mystery room. Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's up there somewhere. It's the one. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's that one. She's a very well-known artist in New York and a writer. I mean, there are a lot of the women who came through that those programs and also mm -hmm. the women's building. Hand me that red book. The red yeah. book. Oh yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, because yeah, this is a really good book on um, on the feminist the Fresno the Fresno art, art program. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. Okay. And also Nancy Yodelman, who yeah. she and Karen Lacoque came and was also practicing ours. Yeah, came Nancy's for book? yeah, came for the opening oh. and oh. and Nancy went through the program, has taught using my approach to teaching, and she facilitated Woman House twenty twenty two. So the, this is yeah, and this California. is a book about that Nancy's fashioning a, a feminist vision. Mm -hmm. So her artwork from 1972 to 2017 show, so that's a good resource. Nancy shows at Turner Carroll. Oh, I have to look at Yeah. Yeah, she's There's a lot of resources here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you can take yeah. home. Yeah. We have a library. Yeah. Yeah. can use as a research center. Oh, sweet. Uh, around the corner. <laughs> Speaking of the impact of Woman House, you know, we have something through Flower, something called the Judy Chicago Art Education Award, which is funded by a woman who is a longtime supporter of mine and Through the Flower. Her name is Mary Ross Taylor. And this year, the award is focused on Woman House as a way of trying to get research and scholarship on the impact of Woman House then, the impact of Woman House 2022, and what other projects grew out of it. So uh, the deadline is September 15th. And uh, there will be people from all over the country applying, has started to apply. So if anybody is interested, you should go on our website, get the guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, my yes. Name, my name is Harry Shepard. I, I just want to say thank you for coming and for, for being in Mexico and for coming and doing this presentation. I, I was just I'm terribly moved. Thank you. Sounds like a good way to end.
haven't been to Woman House 2022, please go over. We have maps on how to get there. See it's me. a walk or see Soren. <laughs> see Soren. I'll be out here. And we're also having performances this evening at 5:30. Oh. At 5:30, and you will get to see the cock and cunt play from a different perspective. <laughs> And uh, the ironing from a different Hutchins. perspective? Yeah, actually, this is very funny. We recreated the ironing performance, which is a historic performance. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> in, in, the, in the performance oh. group, yeah, in the performance group, nobody volunteered to iron. <laughs> no one knew how. No one knew how. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we'll Thanks see you all. Coming. Thank you.